Hi, I'm Pastor Jeff Siever, and it's my pleasure to welcome you again to worship online with our congregation, Triumph Lutheran Brethren Church. We've thought of ourselves as one church with two campuses, ah, but these days, like churches around the country, around the world, we're basically one church. It's been a joy not only to hear your encouraging comments as, uh, as our congregation feels a sense of belonging through this marvelous technology, but also those of you that have been dropping in from different parts of the country and even the world. So on this Easter morning, thanks for joining us as we celebrate, and we hope you're encouraged. Shouts of joy and victory resound in the tents of the righteous. Thus begins our call to worship for today. In Jesus' day, the Romans had built all kinds of roads, a network of roads that they used to conquer and subdue foreign countries. Jesus sent his disciples into that world to use those very same roads to carry his good news to the world. Today, we have a whole different kind of network that we're able to use to carry that same gospel message to our world today. Our call to worship once more. Shouts of victory resound in the tents of the righteous. The Lord's right hand has done mighty things. The Lord's right hand is lifted high. The Lord's right hand has done mighty things. I will not die, but live and will proclaim what the Lord has done. The Lord has chastened me severely, but he has not given me over to death. Open for me the gates of the righteous. I will enter and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord through which the righteous may enter. I will give you thanks for you answered me. You have become my salvation. The stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. The Lord has done this, and it is marvelous in our eyes. The Lord has done it this very day. Let us rejoice today and be glad. Well, thank you, Pastor Bruce. As we continue, let's lift our voices together in praise and adoration of our risen Savior, Jesus Christ. We're going to sing a song called Man of Sorrows, and it does a good, it, it'll take us from the, the, the cross on Friday to the empty grave on Sunday. Let's sing together. Man of sorrows, Lamb of God, by his own betrayed the sin. Jesus, we need you. 
Well, welcome to Triumph Online Services on this Easter Sunday. We're glad that you're tuning in again. Uh, if, you're, uh, if you're back, we're, we're thank you that you're back here. Uh, so your first time, thanks for joining us. This is a time in our normal of our services where we talk about the life in our church. And you know, one of the things that we have just kind of kept as a mantra for ourselves is that church isn't canceled it's moved and so we've been asking for you to send in photos of of how you are watching our services or living your life uh, that's playing out in your church and your living rooms and in your dining rooms and so why don't you take a look at some of these photos as seeing that life happening in your homes you I have really enjoyed seeing that each and every week uh, people have sent in not only uh, not only photos but some of them have sent messages and uh, they have just meant so much to us as we've been able to celebrate those and bring those uh, and celebrate those with you um, but also be able to pray for those and praise God for those as well some of the comments I, I got this past week were you know I just finished participating in today's worship service and I just wanted to pass on how much the different parts of our service meant to me and it sincerely warmed my heart and it strengthened my faith another person said during this time um, he he has meaning god for lack of a better word impelling me forward he is my thought process on specific matters because it's not things that come from me it's about what he is imparting things to me that's why we're doing what we're doing um, we desire to see the gospel of Jesus Christ move forward. Um, and we have been just um, humbled by how you have supported us in that mission, um, by your generosity. And we know uh, about this season and how difficult it is during this time. And we're just humbled about how you have just partnered with us um, in seeing the mission of triumph and the mission of Jesus Christ and the gospel move forward. Um, and so this is a time in our service where we talk about generosity. And before anything, we know that generosity is stemmed in Scripture. In Matthew 19, it reminds us that generosity is liberating. It says, Jesus answered, If you want to be perfect, go. Sell your possessions and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. Let's pray. Father, I just thank you, um, Lord, for that reminder um, that, Lord, we are called to come and to follow you. Father, we uh, know that as we um, present these things at your feet and as, as, Lord, as we give to see your mission go forward, we know, um, Lord, that you are going to use them in miraculous ways to bring the knowledge of who you are to your people. Father, on this day in particular, we are just reminded on this Easter morning, Lord, that the tomb was empty and that you have been resurrected and that you are on your throne. What an important time for us to know that and to be reminded of that and have that assurance. And so, Father, we are thankful that we're reminded of that today. And just like we can say every Sunday, every single Sunday is Resurrection Sunday, and that you are risen and you have been risen indeed. We thank you and we praise your name. We pray this in your name. Amen.
It's Easter, a day to celebrate. We're reading from God's word today in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, the words of the Apostle Paul penned under inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Listen to these good words. Now, brothers and sisters, I want to remind you of the gospel that I preach to you, which you received and on which you have taken your stand. By this gospel, you are saved. If you hold firmly to the word that I preach to you, otherwise you have believed in vain. For what I received, I passed on to you as of first importance that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures and that he appeared to Cephas and then to the twelve. After that, he appeared to more than 500 of the brothers and sisters at the same time, most of whom who are still living, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James and then to all the apostles. Continuing at verse 12. But if it is preached that Christ has been raised from the dead, how can some of you say there is no resurrection of the dead? If there is no resurrection of the dead, then not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, our preaching is useless, and so is your faith. More than that, we are found to be false witnesses about God. For we have testified about God that he raised Christ from the dead. But he did not raise him, in fact, if the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, then Christ has not been raised either. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile. You are still in your sins. Then those also who have fallen asleep in Christ are lost. If only for this life we have hope in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. But, but Christ has indeed been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through a man, the resurrection of the dead also comes through a man. For as in Adam all die, so in Christ all will be made alive. But each in turn, Christ, the firstfruits, then when he comes, those who belong to him. Then the end will come, when he hands over the kingdom of God, the Father, after he has destroyed all dominion, authority, and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet, the last enemy to be destroyed is death. So ends the reading. Christ is risen. Let's pray. Lord, today, on this morning that Christians around the world celebrate the wonderful truth that you're alive, Lord, we join in that celebration. Thank you, Lord, that because you live, we too will live. So today, Lord, make us alive afresh and anew as we rejoice and proclaim Christ is risen. May the world hear this good news and come to believe, for we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you, Pastor Vern. What a gift that the Word of God is. And today, Triumph family, we join with Christians all around the world to celebrate the resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Let's declare that good news together uh, with the Easter Creed. So I'll start, and you can respond with Krista. Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus Christ is Lord indeed. He is risen from the dead. He is risen from the dead indeed. Alleluia. 
Hallelujah. 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 Let's do that again. Let's do that again. Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus Christ is Lord indeed. He has is risen from the dead. He is risen from the dead indeed. Alleluia. 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 Amen and amen. Let's sing together. In the darkness we were waiting without hope and without light. Till from heaven you came running, there was mercy in your eyes To fulfill the law and prophets, to a virgin came the word From a throne of endless glory, to a cradle in the dirt Praise the Praise the Spirit, three in one, God of glory, majesty, praise forever to the King of kings, to reveal the kingdom coming, and to reconcile the lies, to redeem the whole creation, you did not despise the cross. For even in your suffering, you saw to the other side, knowing this was our salvation, Jesus for our sake you died. Stone, 
this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace, when fears are still, when striving cease, my comforter. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground, but the men said to them, why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, he has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee, the son of man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men, be crucified and on the third day be raised again. Then they remembered his words. When they came back from the tomb, they told all these things to the 11 and to all the others. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the others with them who told this to the apostles. But they did not believe the women because their words seemed to them like nonsense. Peter, however, got up and ran to the tomb. Bending over, he saw the strips of linen lying by themselves, and he went away, wondering to himself what had happened. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Happy Easter. Did you know that the miracle that centers our hope and fuels our hope was first heard in a cemetery? I never thought I would get to do this, 
But because of the unique situation where we're finding ourselves sheltered in our homes and we're worshiping in isolation, I had the opportunity to do something that's always been on my bucket list. I thought, wouldn't it be great to preach the message of Easter from a cemetery? In a place where we can't help but be reminded of our mortality, to have the opportunity to preach the good news of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. As we all know, that good news that changes, changes the world and changes our lives was first heard in a cemetery 2,000 years ago outside of Jerusalem. In the story that Krista read to us from Luke's beautiful account and his gospel, we go to the cemetery with three brave women whose lives had been changed by Jesus, who had come to love him for the Savior and, 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 the, and the source of hope that he was. And their hopes had been crushed as just a couple days before, on that Friday, Jesus was nailed to a cross. They watched him die. These brave women watched him as he was taken down and taken to the, to the tomb. And they watched him as his body was hurriedly prepared and put away. They had spent Saturday, like the rest of their friends, sitting in a state of despair and wonder and apprehension, wondering what the future held. Yeah, they were sheltering in place. But on Easter morning, they headed out to the place where they had seen Jesus been laid, much like people come to a cemetery like this to honor the memory of someone that they love. Oh, were they in for a surprise. As they approached uh, the tomb of Jesus, they saw that it had been disturbed. As they went inside to investigate, they were met by messengers of God. We, they are described in Luke as two men who, whose clothes were shining bright. We know that uh, the other accounts describe them as angels. Actually, the word angel in the Greek language, angelos, literally means messenger. This was one of those moments, like the birth of Jesus, when God was intervening, doing something powerful and important, something that was not natural, something that was supernatural. And God, in his mercy and his love for us, provides an intervention, a message from heaven itself, as, as the women who went to the tomb heard from the angels. First, a question. Why are you looking for the living among the dead? And we're going to talk about this morning the, the miracle that the resurrection of Jesus transforms the death of Jesus from a tragedy to a triumph. Then they told them that he's not here, he has risen. And we're going to, again, um, consider together the wonderful transformation at the end of our lives when a question mark is transformed into an exclamation mark because he is risen indeed. And lastly, we're going to take a look at how uh, the resurrection of Jesus changes the shape of our lives from being a religion to a relationship as we look at those important words, remember. In fact, let's look at those now. In Luke chapter 24, we find that the, the words of the messengers or the angels were these. Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He is risen. And then these words. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee? The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men, be crucified on the third day, and uh, be crucified and on the third day be raised again. Then they remembered his words. You know, they weren't going to the cemetery expecting a miracle. They were going to the cemetery to reflect on the death of their Lord. And that death was really important. It's impossible to have a resurrection if there wasn't a death that preceded it. But the important thing about the resurrection is that it empowers and validates everything that the scriptures had said about the death of Jesus. The death of Jesus was an unspeakable tragedy. His disciples were, were grieving that death. But the death of Jesus was necessary for the scriptures from the very beginning were clear that the wages of sin is death, that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, and that a sacrifice must be made to atone for the sins of the world. 
on that awful day that we call Good Friday, something powerfully important was happening. As Jesus himself, the very Son of God, was offering his life as the atoning sacrifice for our sins. When from the cross, Jesus says, it is finished. That, that's unspeakable hope for sinners like us. My wife Kathy and I were talking about that this week. Maybe you've been talking more about spiritual things, about your relationship with God during this time of uncertainty. We were talking about the, uh, the good news that it is finished. We were talking about how God forgives us. How looking back on our lives, that those things that we wish wouldn't have happened, that we wouldn't have said, that they've been taken care of. God is not counting those against us. When Jesus went to the cross, he died for those things and he remembers them no more. <laughs> Some of us have uh, been doing a little bit of remembering. Some friends of mine have been sorting through pictures. Every once in a while I'll get a text or I'll see on Facebook a picture from a friend's past that brings back good memories. You know, during this time, all of our memories aren't, well, they aren't the best memories. Kathy said, just imagine, Jeff, if you look back on your life like God looked back on your life, think of how some of those memories shape your relationships with others today. Think how hard it is to not have those in mind when you're in the middle of a stressful situation and those memories come back. She reminded me that, that God, as he looks at me, as he looks at us, that he doesn't remember those things anymore. Could you imagine that there's no barrier of sin between you and God because Jesus took, he took upon himself to step in the gap, to take upon himself the judgment that our sins deserve so that we might be at peace with God. The resurrection turned the death of Jesus from a tragedy into a triumph. As the messenger said to the women, he must be handed over to sinful men. He must be crucified. Why? Because of God's great love for you and for me that we might not fear one day standing before him accountable for all of our sins. Jesus took care of that. Secondly, the resurrection of Jesus transforms the end of our lives from a question mark to an exclamation. Pastor Vern was reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, earlier, that powerful chapter. And, and if you have time later today, we all have a lot of time, right? If you have questions about the resurrection, if you have questions about what's going to happen when Jesus comes back, it's covered beautifully in, uh, in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. But I'm just going to read these words. If Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile. You are still in your sins. Then those who have fallen asleep in Christ are lost. If only for this life we have hope in Christ, we're to be pitied more than all men. The death of Jesus was a wonderful act of sacrificial love, but did it have power? Paul says it didn't have power unless Jesus rose from the dead. But in verse 20, Paul writes this, But Christ has indeed been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through a man, the resurrection of the dead comes through a man. For as in Adam all die, so in Christ all will be made alive. But each in his own turn. Christ the first fruits, then when he comes, those who belong to him. Christ has indeed been raised from the dead. And so we realize today that because Christ was raised, God has made promises about our future. Because death did not have the last word in Jesus' life, death will not have the last word in our lives either. You see, there's this powerful change that happened when Jesus rose from the dead. That change is our perspective on the finality of death. Some of you who are watching this maybe have already done this or in the next few minutes are going to do this. You're going to hit pause on your... Uh, on your device on which you're watching uh, this Easter message. And you're going to go fill up the coffee cup or make sure the toast didn't burn and get resettled. And then you're going to hit play again and life will go on. You know, when Jesus rose from the dead, that was a reminder of what uh, death is, is like for us, that it has lost its power, it has lost its finality. 
and that uh, one day uh, God's going to hit play again. We're going to be raised from the dead and life is going to continue in a marvelously different, wonderful way because Jesus rose from the dead. Paul said it's like the first fruits. I grew up in a southern Minnesota town where the summer uh, was defined by the pea pack and the corn pack. I grew up in a, in a town where the Green Giant Company had its cannery. And uh, when those first trucks came in from the, from the fields with that first load of peas, we know that that was just the first load, that many more loads would follow. In the Old Testament, it was called the first fruits. As the fields were ready to harvest, that first, that first wagon load or whatever that came in from, from the field, that was the first fruits and that was often offered as a sacrifice to God. We as believers understand that right now uh, we are waiting for Jesus to return. As you look around in this cemetery, there are a lot, lots of those who are, well, let's just put it this way, their souls have gone to heaven, their remains are here, but really their lives have been placed on pause. Their souls are with Jesus, waiting for God to press play again when life will again uh, continue and, and take shape in a wonderful way. We don't have, we, we wonder when, but we don't wonder if life will go on. Because Jesus was raised from the dead, we too will be raised from the dead. One last thing, the resurrection of Jesus changes our understanding of life with God from a religion to a relationship. Little did those women know when they went to the tomb that they would see Jesus again. Jesus would not be just a memory. Although they would never forget the moments they shared with him, that would not be the end of their relationship with Jesus. Later, Jesus would appear to, to his apostles and, and we can imagine the joy that they experienced when they saw their living Lord. You see, when Jesus rose from the dead, he revealed himself to the to his uh, disciples, as uh, Pastor Vern read, but he also then would ascend into heaven. And we know that right now, as we are here on this earth, we have a living Lord who is seated at the Father's right hand in heaven, and he is aware of us, he knows us, he hears our prayers. We have a relationship with God because we have a relationship with a living Lord who is seated at the Father on our behalf. He hears our prayers. He hears our prayers that are spoken and unspoken. And we've been praying a lot of those lately. So I'm thinking about Alexa. Alexa hears everything in my home. In fact, uh, sometimes I think she hears more than I want her to hear. It's amazing. I don't, I don't have to say her voice clearly. I have a grandson who will go unnamed that will say, Wexa, play the hippopotamus. And a for some reason, he didn't even say your name right, but he seemed to understand him and, and know what he wanted. Do you understand that, that uh, Alexa is just a human toy or shadow compared to the reality that we have a relationship with God through Jesus Christ, that right now he is able to hear the prayers of all of his people. He puts Alexa to shame. He knows our name. He knows the sound of our voice. He knows our heart's desire. He knows our anxious thoughts and he hears us when we pray. Because of the resurrection of Jesus, the death of Jesus was transformed from a tragedy into a triumph. The end of our lives is no longer a question mark, it's an exclamation mark. The best is yet to come. And the shape of our lives in relating to God is not just a religion, it's defined by a relationship. Let's look at how this account in Luke ended. And we find our friend Peter uh, uh, central to how this story ended. Peter, like the other apostles, uh, was uh, sheltering in place on Easter morning, wondering what would happen next. Think of all the, uh, the disciples of Jesus or the apostles, Peter probably had the most on his heart and on his mind. Peter's Good Friday did not end well. Thursday night before Jesus died, Peter had succumbed in his flesh. Peter had succumbed in his weakness to the pressure of the moment and he denied that he even, that he, that he knew Jesus. He denied his Lord. And then he watched him die. And he heard that he had been put in the tomb. Could you imagine what was on his heart? I can imagine 
what would have been on my heart. There are times in my heart when my own failure and my own sin clouds my awareness of Jesus and all he's done for me. On uh, Thursday mornings, I meet with a group of guys. We open God's word and we talk about it and talk about life and pray for each other. We talked about Peter on this last Thursday. It happened to be when Jesus was washing the disciples' feet and Peter, like he often did, just had a hard time figuring out what Jesus was doing and kind of had a better idea. The guys I share life with, man, we love Peter. Peter is a reminder that God meets us not at our strengths, but at our weakness. Peter went to the tomb. It says, in fact, Peter got up and ran to the tomb, bending over. He saw the strips of linen lying by themselves, and he went away, wondering to himself what had happened. Oh, he had some good news that eventually would sink into his soul. In the, in the account that Mark gives us of, uh, of that Easter morning, the messenger of the angel says to the women at the tomb to go tell his disciples and tell Peter. Peter, in his struggle and his doubt, had no idea how much the God of hope loved him and was looking forward to dispelling his fear and his guilt that Peter might know the good news that it is finished that God was not dealing with him according to his sin, but according to his mercy and his love. And Jesus made that permanent. He made that unshakable, that Peter could know forgiveness based on what Jesus did for him on the cross. And Peter would have a future and a hope. One day he would see his Lord face to face again in heaven. In the meantime, he would have the privilege of serving him, knowing that Jesus was with him. In fact, Peter would be with the others as they looked up to heaven and Jesus ascended back to the Father. We're still waiting for him. We're still waiting for that great trumpet uh, sound when the dead in Christ will rise and we'll be all united with him. Peter heard those words, those last words of Jesus as recorded in Matthew. I will never leave you or forsake you. I will be with you always. And he is with us. He's with us today in the midst of these uh, interesting times that we're living in. We can know that because of Jesus' resurrection, his death means our sins have been taken care of. Because of Jesus' resurrection, we know that our future is secure. And because of uh, Jesus' resurrection, we can understand that right now we have a relationship with the living God. Maybe even at this moment in your life, on Easter, on this Easter, maybe because of what has been happening around us, you're kind of like Peter. He looked, in the, he looked in that grave, that empty grave, and wondered what it meant. God in his mercy, by his Holy Spirit, would remind him of the truth of what Jesus had done for him. And he would bring him peace, and he would bring him hope. You may be living with that this morning. What a great morning to praise God and thank him for what he's done for you. You may be wondering, like Peter was, on that moment, kind of how, how things are between you and God. I'm here to tell you this morning that Jesus died for your sins. He, take, he took care of them. And that if you believe that, you can know for certain that, that your sin debt, the judgment that was against you, Jesus took care of that. It is finished. And you can also know that, that at the end of your life, you will not face God's judgment, but you will face you will face the good news of seeing your Savior, the one who knows about you now, the one who died for your sins, and the one who is waiting for you to turn to him if you haven't, and simply say, Lord, have mercy on a sinner like me. And he will, and he will. He will take away those sins. He will count you as one of his own, and he will never leave you or forsake you. He will be with you always. So this morning, I pray that uh, that we will remember this day. I think we will remember this day. And that uh, as we look at the reminders around us in this place of our mortality, we are reminded that the death does not have the last word. Later in 1 Corinthians 15, we hear those powerful words, Oh, death, where is your victory? Oh, death, where is your sting? 
God has won the victory for us and we have the privilege of living in that victory. So I hope you're encouraged by this good news this morning. God has, uh, God has chosen in his great mercy and love to extend us to us a living hope. Let's pray. Father, this morning on this, uh, on this day in this quiet place with the sounds of life all around and yet also the reminders of our mortality, we thank you for the gift of life. We thank you for the gift of hope. We thank you for the gift of salvation that you made possible through the death and resurrection of Jesus. We thank you that uh, in your great plan, you accomplished Jesus what must be accomplished as the messenger said. You must be handed over, you must be crucified and, and, and be raised on the third day. So Lord, these are things that uh, we know. Um, as the women were reminded of what you said, that that truth came to life in them. And we pray that by your Holy Spirit, you would take your word this morning, reminding us that this is not just a, uh, an event in history from the past. This is what you did to bring us to yourself, that we might live today with peace, that all is well between you, our Heavenly Father, and us, and hope that one day we will see you and that the best is yet to come. In the meantime, in this time of uncertainty, we pray that you would again remind us that we are not alone, we have a relationship with you, and that you hear our prayers, and that you give us hope. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. I invite you to rise as you're able as we respond to this beautiful, great news and declare together, Christ the Lord is risen today. Well, thank you so much for allowing us to be a part of your Easter Sunday. What a gift it is to, to be with you. And, um, and we just pray that this service uh, really showed you that Jesus is risen. He is risen indeed. Receive this blessing. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in hope. Thank you once again for allowing us into your homes. Go in peace and serve the Lord.